Yeah. Okay, so let's start. Welcome everybody. In this talk, I will present you our work titled Towards a Standard Approach for Eco Gender Detection, a Rabbit Case Study. My name is Virginia Moni and I'm a research fellow at ISTI CNR in Pisa, in Italy. I'm currently focusing on online disinformation related phenomena such as eco gender and polarization. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Laura Pollacci, and Giulia Rossetti. So let's, let's start. This talk is structured in four main parts. First, we have to introduce the task of eco gender detection. Next, I will explain to you the main idea behind our approach, first in more general terms, and then we will see its application on them. Last, I will show you results and draw conclusions. So what is an eco gender? There is no a formal definition, but generally speaking, with eco gender, we refer to a situation in which one's beliefs are reinforced due to repeated interaction with individuals sharing the same point of view. This phenomenon has been frequently linked with the cognitive dissonance theory, which states that individuals feel uncomfortable when exposed to information conflicting with their pre-existing beliefs. Such discomfort leads to another phenomenon known as the selective exposure or confirmation bias. I mean that individuals tend to expose themselves to any contents or people congruent with their own opinion, resulting in this way in an even more polarized situation. This process has been further exacerbated by the advent of social networks due to their need to maximize user engagement via the content personalization, for example. As a result, eco gender limiting individual exposure to solutions content, threatens the democratic flows of opinion, fostering in this way hate and anti-the episodes, bottom of the line and offline ruins. This is why it's of utmost importance to design strategies to mitigate those phenomena in digital environments. Of course, the first step in this direction is the detection of eco gender. Up to date, a standard strategy to do so is the meeting. Indeed, previous work follow different approaches to deal with it, which can be grouped into a content-based approach, network-based one, and finally an IV solution. The content-based approach relies mainly on the eco aspect. I mean that users are clustered together based on the type of content they consume or that they share regardless of, of their interaction with each other. On the contrary, the network-based strategy mainly focuses on finding cluster topologies in user interaction related to their motive. Finally, the hybrid approach considers both the eco and gender dimension of the phenomenon, impairing the user ideology and then defining the interaction network. Unfortunately, such fragmentation of methodologies has led over the year to conflicting results, even in the same social network. Furthermore, most of the studies are single platform. And so this aspect severely limits the application and doesn't allow to compare results across the entire range of social media platforms. For such reason, it is that this research field would benefit from a standard approach based on features shared by the majority of social networks. So, moving in this direction, today we introduce a four-step approach to identify eco-gender on Reddit that can be easily extended to other social media platforms as well as to other domains. For such purpose, first we try to give a formal definition of the phenomenon. So, given the network of all interaction about a controversial topic, we define an eco-gender as a subgroup of nodes or users who share the same ideology and tend to have that connection primarily within the same group. Why do we start with Reddit? Well, mainly for two reasons. First, Reddit, compared to popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter, is the least explored from an eco chamber point of view. Secondly, it is very active in discussion and debate on a wide range of different topics and thus suits our work scope very well. So, conforming to the definition, our approach consists basically of the four following steps. First, we have to identify a controversial topic and thus people discussing it. Then, 
we estimate the opinion of those users with respect to the topic by looking at the textual content of their post. Next, we define the interaction network of users involved in the debate based on the replies within the chat, I mean, based on comments. Last, following a community detection strategy, we detect homogeneous groups of users from a structural and ideological point of view. Uh, then, now we can move on exploring in detail how we can apply this approach on Reddit. First of all, we should select a controversial topic and a such purpose we decide to focus on the debate between Trump supporters and a Trump citizen in gun control and minority discrimination related subreddits. Our analysis covers the first two and half years of Donald Trump's presidency. So talking about the data necessary to cope with our approach, first, we need a ground truth of polarized posts concerning the pro-Trump and anti-Trump ideas in order to train a text classifier able to estimate the meaning of a post. To do so, we retrieve a post shared in subreddits known to be strongly polarized with respect to Trump beliefs. Then we have to retrieve both posts and comments about the two true topics in which we want to find echo chambers evidence. Thus, both for gun control and discrimination, we select several subreddits related to those issues, attempting in this way to cover different points of view. Once we have the data, the second step consists of estimating the user opinion on the controversy based on its post content. We model such an issue as a text classification task. So the opinion conveyed by a post is assessed by quantifying their degree of alignment with pro-Trump ideologies and vice versa. In this case, we opt for a popular approach for sequence learning often used in the political domain. In detail, we design a long short-term memory network that leverages word embedding and outputs a single continuous value ranging from 0 to 1, where 1 means that the post supports Trump and 0 otherwise. Notice that in this case study, we look for echo chamber with respect to Trump ideologies, and thus we have set up a single class classifier. Of course, the same approach should be also viable in a multi class scenario. So, in this case study, the best performing model is the one with globe word embeddings and 128 units of LSTM that reaches an accuracy of about 83% on the validation test and of 84% on the test test. We do not have any directly comparable baseline on Reddit. However, our results are in line with those obtained for similar tasks, tasks on different social networks like Twitter and Facebook. Furthermore, we also validate our model on the two sociopolitical topics. However, we do not have any labeled data for gun control and minority discrimination subreddits. To deal with this, we search for users which are present in our ground truths among these subreddits and label them accordingly. As you can see from the results in the table, even if the model suffers from the domain change, it can generalize quite well, allowing us to go on with the next step. So, we compute the Linux score of all posts retrieved on gun control and minority discrimination subreddits. And finally, in order to obtain the overall user leaning score, we average all of its individual post scores. As you can see from the plots on the right, the post leaning distribution shows in both topics the typical U shaped distribution of controversial or polarized issues. So, we can assert that both for minority discrimination and gun control, we can find both sides of the controversy, that is, pro-Trump and anti-Trump posts. Okay, the, is this enough to assess if a user falls in an echo chamber? As I said before, an echo chamber is basically an ideologically narrow group of individuals. So it becomes necessary to define user interaction network to find evidence of them. Most of the previous approaches rely on the follow PM relationship to define the connection among users. Unfortunately, currently, Reddit doesn't allow to discover who follows whom, and moreover, users might not consume everything produced by the user they follow. Instead, if a user writes a comment to another user, we can assert for sure that they are somewhat connected. For such reasoning, we define networks through comments, 
And so each node represents a user, and an edge between two users exists if one very appear back to the other. Furthermore, we label each user with his pre-computed leaning, and to do so, we discretize the continuous leaning to labels. For a trap, if the average user leaning is greater than 0.5, and then we drop to the right. In this case study, we try to look for echo chambers over a different semester, rather than in the whole period, mainly because we are also interested in analyzing their stability over time. So we define an effort for each semester of its topic. We can now move on to the last step of our approach, which is to detect homogeneous group of users in the defined network. We address such a problem testing different community detection algorithms, such as Louvain, Infomat, and EVA. However, we obtain the best result using EVA, a community detection algorithm, designed to identify topologically well-defined communities that are also homogeneous with respect to attributes carried by the node. Well, once we have identified our candidates' communities for each topic and each semester, we start to evaluate them, imposing two constraints, one ideological and the other structural. Concerning the topology of a community, we measure how well knit a community is using conductance. So if a community has a conductance greater than 0.5, then it is excluded. Similarly, we use purity to evaluate the homogeneous group thinking. So if a community has a purity smaller than 0.7, we do not consider it an echo chamber. Okay, we have completed our pipeline, so now we can take a look at the results. In this plot, we show the evaluation process that sustains program control and minority explanation related strategies. We have one plot for each semester, so we display the conductance on the x axis and on the y axis to purity, cell codes represent in communities where red denotes communities populated by most the Trump users, while blue and Trump. The horizontal red line instead tests the purity threshold and thus the community is lying above it can be classified as eco chamber. Notice that here we are just plotting those communities that satisfy the conductance constraints and so the topological one. Okay, what we can infer from this figure with respect to the gun control subreddits, we notice a general tendency. Most of users do, don't fall in echo chambers and take part in communities composed by a majority of Trump users. This basically means that the anti-Trump users talking about guns also interact with those with opposite ideologies and thus not insulate themselves. On the other hand, minority explanation subreddits offer different insights. Indeed, we can notice that both Trump supporters and anti-Trump citizens tend to integrate themselves in an echo chamber in different semesters. However, looking again uh, at these plots, we can notice that in, in both topics, echo chambers are not stable across different semesters. This attitude is particularly evident for gun control. We have further investigated such an aspect, but for the sake of brevity, we don't cover it now. To conclude, in this talk, we have proposed a four-step approach to identify eco chambers on Reddit, and as shown uh, in the figure on the right, with respect to previous approaches, this one is built up on features and resources that are shared by most social networks, and so it should be easily extendable to other popular platforms as well as to other domains. Indeed, we are actively working uh, in this direction. Finally, as a long-term plan, we would like to further extend our, our approach, attempting to mitigate the eco-chambers effect across different platforms and domains uh, as well. So, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. All right, thank you very much. Um, so, I would like to open to whole, our audience. Any questions, feel free to ask 